What is going on? It is Alex coming back at you with another video. And today it is another three round mock draft. that's going to be split up into two days, day one and day two, just like the NFL draft. Day one's round one, day two is rounds two and three. This is going to also have quite a few trades. And more importantly, this is my first video when we have breached 10 thousand subscribers thank you so much for that that is a huge milestone so of course i have to end up wearing my micah parsons penn state jersey because that's the only real college jersey that i have but it is awesome i love it thank you guys so much for all the support that y'all give on a daily basis i could not have done it without you i mean you guys have been with me since the beginning of covid and it kind of turned out as you know a passion project that just became the backbone of my life so thank you so much from the bottom of my heart y'all are amazing feel free to follow me on all the social medias because I mean on Twitter, you know, we're going off there 24 seven. So this is where I'm a little bit more coherent there. I'm a little more incoherent and a little bit more entertaining. So, I mean, you never know if that's a little bit more your cup of tea, feel free to follow me there. All the links are in the description below. Feel free to take advantage of our two sponsors, Oli Pop as well as underdog fantasy to also get your fixins. So yes, come hop on the train. We are going to 15 K next 20 K and then beyond super excited for that. Let's get this going because we don't need to have that long winded of an intro starting off with the number one overall pick. By the way, this is a live mock draft. I have no idea what's going to go on, but we're going to have fun while doing it and leave your comments down below. If I slip up on something, I love to be wrong only once. And if you stop me now, it will only be once. So I'm watching you. Let's get into this. The Bears, uh, you know, we're going to be taking Caleb Williams at the first overall pick. That's just going to be the guarantee. Now, the question is, where do we send? lay quarterback Justin Fields. I think they should trade him. And there's some rumors that he could be a first round pick. I'm not there. I'm not. I think he's probably worth a second, maybe a second plus, you know, a next year third round pick. That's why I sent him in my recent mock draft this earlier this week where I did two rounds with one trade. That was the Justin trade. And I sent him to Pittsburgh. Love that as a Steelers fan and as a Bears fan. That's a complicated story that we can, of course, revisit on another day. But uh, we are not going to be sending him to Pittsburgh this time. I do think we are going to be sending a second round pick essentially for Justin Fields. But the question is who Raheem Morris is now the head coach of the Falcons. When I first did that mock draft, it seemed like Bill was the head coach of the Falcons. So Raheem Morris is going to be there. Same thing with Zach Robinson, most likely as his OC that he's a leading candidate, if not the OC when this video drops. So, uh, we love that for them as well. Don't think Zach Robinson is going to be the one pounding the table necessarily for Justin Fields. He's done all, he's had a lot of success with more of the Michael Penix build. So I don't know, maybe we can trade up into the second round or late first round to get Michael Penix. But I doubt that having a familiar mold that works is going to be, um, or going through a route that is not a familiar mold for Zach Robinson is going to be the primary goal of this organization to spend a very valuable pick on. So other teams of note, I think the Raiders are an excellent location. You think about it, we're talking about Antonio Pierce, like having some experience with Jaden Daniels there back at ASU. And he's a great head coaching hire. Love him. Telesco is kind of ballsy. So, you know, we do love that as well. I think this could be a good spot for the for Justin Fields to go. And you think about it, you got Aiden O'Connell. This is going to be a second round pick in value. So you can still spend this on a star piece of your puzzle. And you still get your mobile quarterback with a big arm who's still developing as a processor. He was pretty damn successful there at ASU with Jaden. And he's going to be way more successful with Justin here in the NFL, in my humble opinion. So that's probably where I'm going to send him in this video. Of course, other notes, uh, other names to note. We do have the Rams if they do want to have a contingency plan. I think they would rather have a longer term. Of course, the Steelers, where I sent him earlier this week. Uh, I mean, hell, potentially the Buccaneers, Baker might not be staying because of the fact that Canales went to uh, went to the Panthers. So there's always that little chink in the armor, so to speak. And then even Washington, like Washington could be in the mood of Ben Johnson, who's been seeing Justin face to face for multiple years, wants to keep him. Of course, I don't think it's uh, it's not official yet, but we kind of all know it's coming. Bottom line, I'm going to be sending him to the Raiders it just makes sense for me in the moment. I haven't sent him to the Raiders that many times over the 20 mock draft with trades that I've done. So I think because this is going to be a little bit higher than the Steelers pick, maybe we get a second, maybe next year fourth. 
the, of course, the next year four is not going to actually affect this mock draft, but it just is a way to sweeten the deal a little bit for the Bears who should be trying to acquire a second round pick in return. So Justin ends up going to the Raiders and the Bears get their second round pick back and they get Caleb Williams. Uh, a lot of people are not huge fans of Caleb Williams. You know, that's just what happens when a player ends up becoming the best prospect of all time type stuff. Like when they get that type of label, you're asking for people to be absolute haters on you. It's understandable. And, you know, he has all the talent in the world. Again, when we have that bar so high and it's very hard to actually match that expectation with play. And when Caleb Williams doesn't have a championship ring on his finger from college, it's understandable why some people will have those gripes, especially when people have very strong connections to Justin Fields. I love Justin Fields, but Caleb Williams, he has equal, if not better talent, even if he's slightly worse in the haters opinions, he's still fiscally a very smart player to go after five years of a much cheaper contract. I mean, if you're that bummed out about the offensive line, you could, of course, either draft one at nine or use the money that is going to be maybe a 20 to 30 to 40 million differential and spend it elsewhere. Caleb Williams is a phenomenal prospect. Don't overthink it, especially when you get to send Justin to a good place where he can end up playing with a great um, receiving core and a coach that really does love his mobility. I think that's just, it's a good way to have both teams kind of win and both players win. Uh, pick number two for the Washington Commanders. I have theorized, I'm not going to do it in my 10K mock draft. I'll probably do it you know, after the senior bowl, just for fun, but I'm going to have the commanders trade out of this pick in some of the, one of the new mocks that's going to be coming up uh, because I'm going to have Jaden Daniels be this selection, just long story short. I'll just select him right now and then we'll just talk about it. But uh, Jaden Daniels, my number two quarterback. That's why I'm not taking Drake may here, but Jaden Daniels, so fluid as an athlete, really great player. And with a whole entire new front office, I just don't think they have the confidence in Sam Howell. However, I do want to test the theory. What if we end up seeing uh, Brian Johnson or it's his name's on Brian Johnson. I'm thinking the Eagles uh, coordinator, but you know who I'm talking about. Uh, Lions OC, like he's going to Ben Johnson. There we go. Ben Johnson's going to like, he's going to love this. He is, but if he's, kind of used to the overall build of, you know, since he has Jared Goff, he could go and stick with Sam Howell and he wants to trade back, get a ton of draft capital, fix the offensive line because he's had Penny Sewell. It makes sense. So once that hiring is official, I absolutely am going to test that theory out. But for the time being, just at the new front office, they didn't have faith. The old front office didn't have faith in Sam Howell at the end. And probably this one won't either. When you're in striking range of a quarterback with great game-breaking ability like Jaden Daniels with his mobility and his pinpoint precision past the numbers, I think it's special. I really do. He just needs to work on what happens in the middle of the field and that he will be better. But, you know, there's a lot of really good untapped potential here. A lot of people are saying go Marvin Harrison Jr. for Washington. And, you know, you have Terry McLaurin who just a year and a half ago was arguably a top three, top four receiver in the NFL. He didn't become ass he might have had an off year but i don't think he's butt cheeks just yet um you have plenty of weapons on that squad just get the quarterback right which i think sam Howell could be that you get the offensive line right and then you'll be good pick number three with the new england patriots uh i want to test a theory out with marvin harrison jr over drake may uh you know gerard mayo loves loves marvin harrison jr of course, he did say he was going to bring in a quarterback at pick number three, said the most valuable player at the most valuable position. So it makes a lot of sense to go Drake May, but I always go Drake May like I always do. So, you know, I actually want to test this theory out. Let's go Marvin Harrison Jr. here out of the Ohio State University. Uh, the Patriots have a good amount of draft capital to where they can take a quarterback at 34 or slightly trade up to the end of the first and get someone like J.J. McCarthy, who has a little bit more mobility, um, not than Drake May, but a little more mobility than a Michael Penix per se. So I'm actually going to go Marvin Harrison Jr. route. We're going to do it. I love Marvin. We're going to show some respect to my board and get the number one overall player. I haven't done this in a very long time. I think the Patriots do need a quarterback, but also the Patriots have been quite solid at drafting very solid value with quarterback down the board. Of course, that hasn't gotten them anywhere since Tom Brady, but 
you could end up actually getting a really solid quarterback down the line. At pick four, the Arizona Cardinals sitting here and Drake Mays on the board. I've always been very excited to trade out with the Cardinals and get a left or right tackle. And that's exactly what we're going to do. There's going to be some teams that are going to say, hey, whoa, Drake May is available. Like, hold up. Like, this is sick. So I want to look at a couple options. Of course, the New York Giants. I love sending Drake May to the New York Giants. Looks great in the thumbnail, too. Got to admit. I also want to highlight the Falcons here. I always screw them over. I hate to say it. I always do. And I've been saying, oh, well, if Bill goes there, Kirk Cousins is going to be the quarterback. Bill's not there. Uh, Kirk will probably just end up going back to the Vikings on a one year deal. And the Vikings will probably draft a developmental quarterback round two. Just, you know, uh, we're just projecting out here. So I think that the, well, the technically the Vikings could be one of those dark horse teams to move up for Drake May at this point too. That'd be really fun. And I think that's a great spot to target those right tackles. Uh, I could get really good value there, but this is also a team who is losing both of their edge rushers, has no defensive interior, no running back of legitimate note. And I don't know if the quarterback position is necessarily the best thing since sliced bread for this team. I could also see a team that has been known to go balls to the wall under Sean Payton. Uh, Sean Payton likes to put his put his nuts on the table and see what happens. I could totally see that the uh, the AFC squad right here in Denver Broncos could want to move up for their future at quarterback. But I want to still move down and get a prime selection if I'm the Cardinals. I'm only making a smaller range trade. We're going to Atlanta. So Atlanta, of course, you're going to have to send both of these picks. Eight and 43 are a guarantee. I don't think you get a future first out of this one. Doesn't make very much sense. Like, I think you could probably get a future second, but you do have to give a little bit more in return. I think pick 90 is fair. The Falcons do probably want to fill in a couple of needs. It's a good time for maybe a good value wide receiver like Malachi Corley, or else you can get good value at edge rusher, for example, because there's a big gap in that day two range where back into day two, you might start getting some really good value like Javon Solomon, which I'm pretty sure he's going to the senior bowl. Super stoked to see that because we're going to mobile. All of. So this is a good value. I mean, again, the Falcons are getting their guy. The, uh, the Cardinals are moving back and still getting good value. This team does need to, you know, they need to get some good stuff on this team. They do have quite a few holes, and I do believe in the front office of Arizona. So Atlanta is the dark horse team. Did not expect them to move up. And we are selecting Drake May out of North Carolina. You know, again, you do need a wide receiver because you have just Drake London on roster. But Drake London times Kyle Pitts times whoever the hell we're going to get in the third round which this does have a third round, so we get to see it, is going to be very, very exciting. Pick number five for the Los Angeles Chargers. So uh, we got Malik Neighbors, you got Brock Bowers here. Those are the two dudes that I am gunning for. Now, the question is, could you trade out of this spot? Technically, yes. I don't think that there's going to be a team wanting to spend that type of draft capital to move up for a weapon like Neighbors or Bowers or, for example, Joe Alt. So it really is down to personal preference here. I love the idea of going Brock Bowers. Um, you got to think, well, if you're trying to identify what Harbaugh is going to want to do, uh, I think he's going to look at that second corner position after having Will Johnson, Mike Sainer still, et cetera. Uh, that secondary really is what carried the Chargers. That's not what they're going to do in round one, but we're projecting what they're going to do here in round two. A wide receiver never seemed to be the big priority for uh, for Michigan, if I'm going to be brutally honest. Like, they had some really solid weapons, but I felt like it was better value than drafting or going after the creme de la creme, so to speak. When it came to tight ends, though, you got Luke Schoonmaker. You got the dude I think his name's Loveland right now. I think that there was a heavier emphasis on nailing tight ends in that Big Ten area than going after the elite wide receivers. That is it a stretch? Absolutely. But it's very entertaining to, you know, at least try to dig into the psyche of Jim Harbaugh. And I think we're going to go after Brock Bowers here. Super special. Also, you know, the tight end is a very valuable position on the Chargers because of the fact that they are looking for extra blocking talent. And Brock Bowers is probably the best blocker that I've seen from the tight end position. Like you get to do so much with Brock. He also counts as a wide receiver. The value of Malik Neighbors might be more. But the opportunity cost, like what you're losing by not taking Malik Neighbors and getting, you know, let's just say another really good deep threat, 
I don't believe is as much than if you pass on Brock Bowers and want to go after another tight end in this class. So I love Brock Bowers. He really is a super unique weapon. I think he is probably going to be taken in this five to 10 range. The question is by who? Uh, pick number six for the New York Giants. This is pretty straightforward. We're going to go Malik Neighbors out of LSU here. Uh, the Giants have been looking for a true leader in that receiving core for a while now. It's been since OBJ and gone through Kenny Galladay. Been trying to do it with getting good value everywhere else. You know, you got Wandell Robinson still there. Jalen Hyatt still there. You got a lot of speed, but you don't have a true alpha in the room. And I think Malik Neighbors does offer that ceiling to be the alpha that you're looking for. Pick number seven for the Titans. We're going to quickly run up Joe Alt to the podium. No reason to have a long drawn out conclusion here. Uh, you know, especially Brian Callahan understanding with all the quarterback injuries he's had due to poor offensive line play. This is not going to be another area where this is not going to be another team where he wants to have to deal with that. Joe Alt is phenomenal. He compliments Peter Skaronsky perfectly, and it just works right for uh, for this team right here. So Titans, Will Levis, they're going to be happy. Brian Callahan, he actually gets to have a bona fide superstar tackle. Joe Alt is going to be that for them. Pick number eight for the Arizona Cardinals. So I potentially would want to continue moving out. I love the idea of Olu Fashanyu to this team. And, you know, maybe we could keep Paris there at right tackle. Uh, but I do really love the value of potentially continuing to move down and selecting better players. The question is who would want to move up, right? I don't really see any team with the stones to move up, except maybe if, this team wants to go crazy. I could see the Saints wanting to fill their offensive tackle position, their true left tackle position with a true left tackle. That's really expensive when they're not even sure about their quarterback. So I don't know if the Saints are going to get that gutsy again. So we'll opt out of that. Uh, other teams that could be looking, we could actually do a quick swap here with the Jets. So the Jets end up getting their tackle of the future. I just don't know if they feel threatened enough by certain teams that, you know, they might want to stay put. So I feel like this is going to be a prime opportunity to just get the best player available. And that's going to be for this team looking at a left or right tackle. Paris Johnson could kick back to his native left. And we could go to Lise Fuaga here, who technically is right next to Olu Fashanyu on my board. But Olu has the most potential. And I think that Paris Johnson performed admirably enough at right tackle to where they feel comfortable keeping him there. You ended up getting an extra first round and an extra second and an extra second out of this. Why not? Good value right there. Olu Fashanyu going to the Cardinals. I pick number nine for the Chicago Bears. Got that second round pick from Justin Fields. You know, this team is looking chill. They're vibing. They're doing good, right? Uh, Romo Dunze is the easy shoe in pick for me at this point because it just makes sense that they're going to Try to value the offensive side quite a bit. At pick 44, though, I could end up getting an A.D. Mitchell over a Romo Dunze. And like I want to target edge rusher, center, and wide receiver. Those are the three positions I want to go after. And at pick 75, I feel comfortable maybe landing a nice Zach Frazier or staying local and getting Drake Nugent, right? I think that's perfectly fine. You could be perfectly happy doing that. Uh, for wide receiver... It's at pick nine, we're going to go Romo Dunze. But if we decide to wait, we could end up getting A.D. Mitchell, Jalen Polk. That's really good value. That's a first round quality player there in round two. If we go edge rusher there in round two, we might get Chris Braswell. If we're lucky, maybe Adisa Isaac. Uh, I just don't know because I'm going to try to press. I'm going to just try to go a little bit more crazy with these edge rushers, so to speak. Uh, because of the fact that there is a massive drop off. So I think the proper value is to go after edge. I do. So just because the value for wide receivers there in round two and centers there in round three. Those are the three positions I really want to go after, not named quarterback because we already did that. Uh, Dallas Turner, he is a freak, but I do think adding a little bit of size with Jared Verse makes a little more sense. Now he has not been fully reliably healthy uh, to be 100% the whole time, but this dude plays through injury and he has a crazy motor. I love Jared Verse. Even if he is not my number one edge in the class, he still performs just as well as them. So I'm very happy to take Jared Verse, even over guys who I have higher because it's 
very minute, the differential. Pick number 10 for the New York Jets. Uh, we're going to be going an offensive tackle here. Could trade back and try to get offensive tackle because you have Romo Dunze here. But, you know, the wide receiver class is not thin enough to, I mean, it's a really deep receiver class. I was just talking about it for the Bears. It doesn't drive enough demand for a wide receiver like Romo Dunze because you can stay put and get someone in the public's eyes probably 90%, 95% as good as Rome rather than spending, you know, a second round pick in order to go and get 5% better. The return on investment doesn't make sense. New York Jets, don't overthink it. Go offensive tackle. The question is, which one do you want to go after? Amarius Mims is phenomenal. JC Latham has his strengths and weaknesses, but some pretty damn good strengths. Talise Fawaga is my right tackle number one. I'm going to stick to my right tackle number one. Amarius Mims has the most developmental ceiling. Talise is probably the best day one. And then JC is a nice balance in between. Pick number 11 for the Minnesota Vikings. Missed out on our QB, and that's okay. Don't need to worry about it too much. Uh, but when looking at the options available, one tackle is off the board, and I'm seeing another team in the Raiders that could even be looking for an offensive tackle here. I'm definitely looking at a team like the Saints who could be looking for an offensive tackle. And I think the Vikings just need a little bit more draft capital. I love the idea of having, you know, three bona fide quarterbacks still on the board with not too many teams being overly desperate for quarterback at this point. So I'm actually going to do a trade I did a little while ago. It is crazy, but it's not out of the realm of possibility, given the fact that this team has a lot of compensatory picks, continues to get compensatory picks because coaches continue to get hired from them, and they do a great job developing coaches. And... They also snag some baller players for really good value that end up being very, very good. Uh, so they end up getting continuously more picks, and they also don't have very many needs. You guys know what I'm talking about. I've done this trade before. It is with the San Francisco 49ers. The Vikings have traded back this far before, except they got fleeced last time. And look at this. They don't really have great draft capital. They don't have a third-round pick. So this is prime opportunity to at least be able to support a trade of this value. Maybe you can toss in a 2026 second round pick in there as well, but the Niners don't have very many needs. They don't. They've supported their needs with proper value, and they have a quarterback on a rookie contract so they can afford to pay other players. So maybe you can toss in a 2026 second round pick in here. I'm not going to play too much with these figures. I just want that first and second round pick going to Minnesota, and then them getting a little bonus, a little cherry on top there from uh, from the Niners because they just don't really need much. This is prime opportunity to get some nice corner value as well in that third round. So the Niners still can address their second biggest need, which is a corner two, which they might honestly do in free agency anyways. But the Niners are going to move up and select their future right tackle and that is a Marius Mims out of Georgia. This team needs an immediate upgrade at right tackle. I mean, they focus so heavily on you know being able to have that consistent offensive line, and the one spot that has not been consistent is that right tackle spot. So, you know, even though the team that's up right now in the Broncos ended up snagging uh, San Fran's tackle for like ninety mil, which is wild. It might have been even more than that, but like an extremely large amount of cash for a player who was not that great. Uh, the Niners have still been searching for that right tackle spot. And Trent Williams doesn't have very much longer in this league. He is 36. Amari Smims needs some coaching as well. That is a prime opportunity for him to do so. This is going to be a great move for San Fran, both in the short run and in the long. Amari Smims, 6'7", 340, very well might be the face of this franchise, just like Trent Williams was. Pick number 12 for the Denver Broncos. I got Romo Dunze here. I do think this is a team that might get very excited about Rome. Uh, could do another trade back here for a team that might just actually want Rome. Talking right now about the Indianapolis Colts could do a they they would love Romo Dunze. This is just a short range trade that could do very well, and then they can move down and still select a top tier corner too, like Terry and Arnold. Big fan of Terry and Arnold, by the way. But you know it's tough. It's tough to say they would pass on Romo Dunze at this point. I do think other teams like the Chiefs, could get a little bit gutsier and try to move up and select a wide receiver like Romo Dunze. We'll see what happens with that. But I do think this team should be in the market for a corner. Corners always go earlier than we expect to. Um, so you do have that on the table. 
But we will go Romo Dunze because I believe there is a threat of a move up from in division. And people do think very, very highly of their 6'3", 210 to 215 pound receiver here in Romo Dunze. Phenomenal player, great mobility. Just I'm not fully sold on him just yet. I just know the NFL seems to be so. Pick number 13 for the Las Vegas Raiders. We got some really good defensive interiors on the board. We got Justin Fields with that second round pick. I do think that defensive interior could be a move that we do see from uh, Vegas. I do think offensive tackle, Telesco likes his offensive tackles. We could go after another first round Bama tackle. (laughs) Not going to do that to y'all this time. Maybe another video. Maybe another video we do that, but uh, not this one. And I'm not going to allow... I'm not going to allow y'all to have to have some PTSD right now. So uh, Terry and Arnold's going to be the guy who I think I select here. I took Nate Wiggins last time. I think Nate Wiggins is phenomenal, uh, but I do like the aggression of Terry and Arnold. You know, there's just something special about how he just loves to blow the play up. And uh, of course, that's why I have him above Nate Wiggins, even though I really do like Nate Wiggins. Restudied him, love him even more. But Terry and Arnold is going to be that X factor for me. I think corner is a little bit more valuable than defensive interior at this point. Even though I love the defensive interiors, you still could get a Brandon Dorless probably there at 77 or a Makai Wingo. There's going to be somebody of good value there. Mason Smith, for example, corner, maybe not as much. And this team, you need to hit on something. And this team hit. They got Terry Arnold and Justin Fields so far in this video. At pick 14 for the New Orleans Saints, multiple options that are phenomenal for this team. Could look at uh, another defensive back since it is potentially possible that with the cap situation, you guys get rid of Marshawn Lattimore. Probably not going to happen. Probably not going to happen. But Nate Wiggins is sitting here. Ennis Rakestraw could be a very dark horse selection for y'all. I do think that left tackle spot, pretty desperate. So we are going to get J.C. Latham tackle out of Alabama. Uh, He's going to be the future at left, even though he played right tackle at Alabama for, I believe it was 17 games that he started. Um, He's still going to be able to be a top tier option for you. You know, he could fill in at right tackle if need be in case of injury with Ramchick, but he's going to be the future option there at left tackle. Great run blocker, still developing as a pass blocker. But what I love the most is that his his work ethic improved. Like that was my big issue with him preseason. He gave up early on a lot of reps, but as the season progressed and as this season progressed, I could tell that he actually started finishing plays and doing a lot better at that. So hoping that that trend continues. Pick 15 for the Indianapolis Colts. A lot of really good options here. Leatu Latu, phenomenal. Cooper DeGene, phenomenal. But I also understand that there's some very good defensive backs in round two that can play very similar roles to Cooper DeGene. Uh, So I'm looking primarily at Nate Wiggins here who could play a great role there in that secondary. Love that for him. Because in round two, I do think Tyler Newbin might be available. You could see Cam Kitchens available. Kalen Bullock available. Uh, Not a huge fan of Javon Bullard. Just watched him. Not a huge fan. But even guys like Cole Bishop down the line, who's going to test very poorly. Like he's just not a very athletic guy. This could be a very good value get for y'all. And you could get a very talented player just who might be a little bit more capped on the athleticism side. I do think defensive interior is a dark horse need for y'all. Wide receiver as well. But I'm going to go after the consensus top corner on the board in Nate Wiggins because one, he does offer a little bit more field awareness than, you know, Juju Brents. And he offers a unique skill set. He's not a great run defender, but he does blow up the plays outside of the box. He does not like to get in the box, but outside the box, he's actually quite phenomenal. So we're going to go Nate Wiggins here out of Clemson. Just the value is too damn good. I love Jalen Jones. He was a top 32 player for me. Ended up going to the seventh round and he's a good starter for y'all, but he's also athletically limited. Both Juju and him are both athletically quite limited. Nate Wiggins has quite a bit more in terms of what he has in the tank. So big fan of Nate Wiggins there. Uh, Just going to give you a nice, versatile piece that you don't have right now to your puzzle. Pick number 16 for the Seattle Seahawks. Uh, Hard to pass on Jerzon Newton. I personally love Byron Murphy, uh, but at the same time, I just saw that his senior bowl measurements, he's not 310, he's 300, and Jerzon Newton is like 295. They're pretty much the same weight. So, uh, big fan of both of these guys. I think it would be smart for this team to 
look at either one. Depends on the coach you end up bringing in, but I do think it's going to be a defensive coach. I'm going to go after Jerzon Newton here. Uh, defensive interior still has not been fully solved. And again, there's only a five pound difference. It used to be 15 or 13 if you want to be a little more anal about it. But, you know, when there was a 13 pound differential and I do technically have Byron slightly above Jerzon, that's where I started questioning it. Now it's, you know, I think Jerzon will have a little bit more momentum than Byron Murphy coming into the draft cycle because of the versatility he brings to the table. He's played edge rusher. He's played defensive interior. And to me, that does carry some weight. Pick 17 for the Jacksonville Jaguars. Cooper DeGene's a fun option here. Very fun option. We do have some really talented edge rushers on the board that should be coming off the board very, very soon. But I love this pick for this team because I think they need a true alpha in the corner position. I love Tyson Campbell. I think he's a fringe alpha. I have a guy who I fell in love with this past week, and he ended up coming out of nowhere. I saw him in a couple of mock drafts in the first. I'm like, man, I just don't really understand. And when you watch this guy play, when you watch the All-22, because that's where I get my opinions from, I don't watch normal game tape on corners, safeties, and wide receivers. I don't ever allow that to happen. That's why sometimes it takes me a little while to fall in love with certain players that, you know, sometimes the game tape gives you enough of a view. I don't give a shit about enough of a view. I like to see everything. That sounds a little creepy, but it is what it is. And it's Rake Straw Jr. Phenomenal player. I think he's the most athletic corner in this class. When he's in his back pedal, he looks like he's jogging when the receiver's running full speed forward. That is incredible. And he's able to, he's, there's an intricacy to his game that I don't see with many other players. So I'd be willing to take Ennis Rake Straw within the top 10. Just got to call it out right now. So this is, of course, amazing value. And I wanted to get him here to the Jaguars, who really could use a little bit more emphasis there. And, you know, after having A.J. Terrell in Atlanta, um, you know, the new D.C. definitely could love himself having another alpha in that corner core. Pick number 18 for the Cincinnati Bengals. It is not looking great right now. It is not. The offensive tackles, not looking too bueno at the moment. A uh, wide receiver, there's some good options there, but the options have slimmed out. Like Emeka Abuka was one of my dream options for this team because he can play both slot and boundary. Not really there anymore. So we're kind of limited on the choices here, which means it's perfect for a trade back. Uh, you got some amazing edge rushers here. I was talking about it. I want these edge rushers to go earlier and more often than you know, maybe what we're comfortable with, because I do think that corners and edge rushers should be flying off the board. Looking at teams that could look at some of these top edge rushers, uh, the Eagles could be in the mood for a layout to law too, but I do think they might be a little bit more in the market for a corner, you know, with it almost being guaranteed that Vic Fangio is going to be your DC. It does kind of feel like that's the way that they're going to go, but um, other teams that could be really desperate for an edge rusher. I mean, of course, Washington could be, but that's just way too far of a trade. Um, this is actually a really bad spot. This is a bad spot for Cincy. I do think Cooper DeGene might carry a little bit of weight. Uh, the Eagles could love a player like Cooper DeGene as well to be very versatile. But again, you're potentially getting an old head there in Vic Fangio. Don't know if he's going to get uber excited about that versatility the way that he should. But if we were to sit here for the Cincinnati Bengals, I do think they look at a wide receiver. And to be fair, there's this wide receiver works well for the Dolphins, and works well for the Bills, and for the Chiefs. So all of their main rivals, this guy is almost a perfect fit. And that's Brian Thomas. And I think he's a great wide receiver too. And he could produce wide receiver one results as a wide receiver too. So this is exactly the role that he'd fit into. And he does actually go up and get it quite well. He's 6'4", 205 pounds. It's Brian Thomas Jr. So Brian Thomas Jr. is going to be the new alpha there, or the new, I guess, is it Omega? Is that the second tier? Hell if I know. I don't want to call him a beta because that's kind of, you know, a little bit disrespectful to Brian. But he's going to be number two there to Jamar Chase. It's going to work very, very well. I love that deep threat ability. Going to continue making this team better and better. Couldn't find a trade back partner. That's the ultimate end goal there. So, and we didn't find one. So it is what it is. Pick number 19 for the Los Angeles Rams. Uh, corner as well as edge rusher are going to be the positions I would look at for the Rams. You know, they're going to be hiring a new DC, obviously with Raheem Morris gone. And, you know, that sucks because Raheem is a beast. But 
that might put a little bit of a focus on just getting more talent and allowing that new DC to get a little more comfortable. And I think they might've went in-house for their DC hire. So feel free to correct me on that one. It's slipping my mind at the moment, but uh, going after a star defensive lineman is I think the best route for success for LA. Leatu Latu, obviously playing right down the street there in Brentwood. So Ingwood, Brentwood, well, it depends on the time. It could be like three hours of traffic, but you know, should be 20 minutes. Uh, you know, they've been able to keep their eyes on this dude for a hot minute now. It just depends on the medicals. Had to medically retire there from Washington, ended up being able to come back to UCLA. I think that he's going to get a lot more attention than what we might be giving him right now. I don't think he tests very well, which is why he might be here because his lower body is not very strong. I just don't see him running very well. But the upper body strength is abnormal for the the lankiness that he at least appears to be. So I love seeing that upper body strength because I think it's easier to develop the little bit more of that flex or he has a great flexibility, but that speed. Uh, and then I think he converts speed to power very well. And once he gets into that proper shape, pick number 20 for the Pittsburgh Steelers, Cooper DeGene does have a lot of bonuses for a team that could use a strong safety, could use a slot in the future as well as just a boundary corner. Uh, Kool-Aid has been slipping a little bit down my board because the last time I watched him, I was actually quite disappointed. We do not need to put safeties up here right now. Uh, right tackle was my dream, but we kind of crushed that dream by taking tackle very early and very often. Now, I do think Kool-Aid could be worth this pick, and I might end up going that route, but we could wait till round two, could end up getting a really good player, or we could move out at this spot. Now, I'm trying to see other teams that could want Cooper to Gene. I'm seeing one right now that could really love Cooper or Kool-Aid. Of course, it depends on the DC. But I've heard even rumors that Ajiro Averro. Well, actually, no, Ajiro is under contract right now. I'm forgetting who it is, but there's a um, particular DC that would be a great fit there in Green Bay that might end up being their guy. But we'll see what happens. Joe Barry's gone. Uh, but Cooper DeGene should be going sooner than later. Uh, the Bills GM just not really wanting to get ballsy and move up is what it is. I might get a little bit gutsy here with the Packers. I do like Cooper DeGene uh, for the Packers here because they have so much draft capital and not many issues and it allows me at least to have some flexibility. I do think the Eagles are a team that's a prime candidate for Cooper, even though, again, the old head himself, um, and Vic Fangio might not be the biggest dude on that, but it is what it is. We're going to move up with Green Bay. Again, look at all the picks they have. Like, why do you need this many? For a team that actually is really close, like, you don't, you don't need that many picks. So of 25 to 20, I do think it requires about a third round pick. Maybe you toss in a fourth rounder there as well, because Pittsburgh is a little bit limited on their overall draft capital. Like, maybe you send that compensatory 135. It's not going to affect this mock draft. So you can do your own negotiating. I just want to get Pittsburgh an extra selection and getting him pick 88 for moving about this spot, thinking about that value, probably close to like 250, 300 points. This gets relatively close to that. So we're going to get there. Green Bay Packers trading a third round pick as well as a uh, fourth compensatory to move up and select Cooper to Gene. He's just so versatile. He could also, he's a, He's going to be a uh, Keyshawn Nixon replacement. You know, you're going to get someone who can play elite slot. You can play elite safety. This team does need multiple safeties as well. But he also is an elite returner, which offers a lot. He's also used to playing in this environment. I've been going base corner for him, like boundary corner in round number one quite a bit. This allows at least a little bit of a change. Pick number 21 for the Miami Dolphins. So we're having the quarterback slip a little bit. That's honestly what I've been loving about this is that quarterbacks usually do slip. Uh, you know, we try to overvalue them and they just don't go. But the Dolphins sitting at this spot, uh, they should be looking at a versatile offensive line piece. I've been loving Jordan Morgan for this squad. You know, I do think that Jackson Powers Johnson also provides a lot of value. Troy Fautanu apparently has 34 inch arms. Didn't know that. Like go off. Like that's an actual tackle length. Did not expect that from him, even though I still think he should play guard. Don't know if he's going to be able to hold up as a tackle. But I'm looking at Jordan Morgan here, and you want a Terran Armstead replacement. And I think this is the smart move for the team. I, a lot of y'all have been saying trade out, get a tight end. But, you know, you don't have to force a worse pick. Like Jordan Morgan needs more refinement 
because he's a great athlete and you have three interior offensive linemen up for a contract. This is a prime guy to have as a guard in the short run and then polish him in the long because I do think he should end up being an offensive tackle. So that is going to be the selection there. Jordan Morgan, tackle out of Arizona to play guard in the short and then tackle in the long. Pick number 22 for the Philadelphia Eagles. Oh my God. I'm just so excited to irritate Eagles fans <laughs> because y'all's team is just very, very difficult to draft for. Like Kool-Aid's here. I know. It seems like that might be the move. Uh, you can't really go and draft Dallas Turner because, you know, I think we should trade it. Uh, deep down, I think we should trade out of the spot. I just don't really believe that y'all are going to be selecting. Um, I mean, you could select Kool-Aid here and then be like, whoop, whoop, and then get the hell out. To be fair, the Cowboys might be lurking for Kool-Aid. They might be they might be thirsty for some Kool-Aid here. And you could kind of flip them off that way. My only issue with getting Kool-Aid is this. You have Slay still there. James Baldberry should be gone. But, you know, let's just say we'll, we'll take him out of the equation. You still have Ricks. You still have Ringo. And you have Isaiah Rogers on the roster. Those are four bona fide starting corners. Like, can Kool-Aid play the slot versus, um, versus C.D. Lamb? I don't know. I don't know. But if you want James Bradbury gone, Slay gone, or fine with Isaiah Rogers being gone, but even though his contract was deferred to this year due to injury, so you're still going to have to deal with him. There's just so many issues with this team having to take him at this spot versus if you trade back, you could still try to address edge rusher, right? You still got Chop Robinson that could develop, but again, you're having him sit and develop for a year. Uh, wide receiver, underrated position to go after. You got Troy Franklin, Lad McConkey. My buddy loves Lad McConkey, so shout out to former co-host of the show. Uh, you could look at linebacker if it is. Well, y'all, y'all ain't gonna draft a first round linebacker, but there's just some better positions potentially to go after. You do have Kalen King who can play every role that you're looking for. Mikey Sainer still. Oh, <gasps> no way! They brought Dwight in here. Oh, what a day! Oh, y'all don't even know how excited I am for that. Bottom line, I'm trying to get Dallas Turner off the board because I think he's phenomenal. He's a great player, and teams should be trying to go after him. I might trade with the Eagle or with the Lions. I might. I think that's a smart move. I don't see. Oh, I want to trade so badly. Um, you know what? No, we're gonna go Kool Aid. We're gonna do it. I don't think Vic Fangio has any form of allegiance to Isaiah Rogers either. Kool Aid's just proper value and. He might be a little bit more of a project in terms of a Fangio system, but it's just best player available. It really is. Uh, but at pick number 23 for the Texans, hard to say no to Dallas Turner at this point. I know defensive interior is the best return on investment for this team because you need someone to plug the middle. But you could go to free agency for that. There isn't really that many that can plug the defensive interior down the line. Like Tavondre Sweat, is a really hot commodity. Ugh, I, I, mm, mm, we're going to go to Vondre Sweat. That breaks my heart. I'm saying that we're going to Vondre Sweat over my number four player. But this team is pretty damn desperate for someone to plug the middle. Tavondre can do that. And his talent is phenomenal. You can't find many. He is actually 343 pounds. He's no longer 362. So I'm kind of intrigued to see how athletic he's going to look there at the senior bowl. Or if UT is just a bunch of liars and, you know, horns down. But, you know, Tavondre Sweat still, you can't find dudes who are 340 who move like him and actually have the pass rushing upside that he has. Um, breaks my heart, but good players fall in the draft. Pick number 24 for the Dallas Cowboys. Uh, left tackle slash center are going to be the way I rock. <laughs> I want to go Troy Fautonu now that I know he has 34 inch arms. Like, just deep down, we want to do that. Uh, I actually might trade out of this spot. I just don't think the value is correct. You got Byron Murphy here who could bring the pass rushing upside that the Cowboys do need. And he is a phenomenal player. Like he is probably creme de la creme. But with Dallas Turner here, Bo Nix as well. I got to bring up Bo Nix. We could quickly trade back up with the Vikings. Like that's a smaller range trade that we could end up, you know, getting our quarterback before the Steelers sitting there could lurk and get their own quarterback. It's not a bad idea. I, I think that's a that's a relatively smart idea. We could move up with the Patriots as well to get their guy. 
Um, you know what, Cowboys? I want to go after a center for y'all in the first place. I think that's where the value lines up. It's going to be a team moving out for Dallas Turner or Bo Nix. And I think Dallas Turner has a lot of a lot of lovers out there. Oh, that sounds so wrong. But uh, we, I think the Vikings are less of a threat than the Lions who I'd have trading up for an edge rusher. So we're going to go with that. We could trade up with the Cardinals here, but I think the Cardinals would be happy with pretty much anybody. Uh, anybody's going to be a good upgrade for the Cardinals. So we're going to be trading up with the Minnesota Vikings. And also, technically, the Cardinals could still lurk for a quarterback. Uh, for this type of range of a trade, it is only, what is that, seven spots. I think it's roughly the same amount that we did a trade for earlier with the Steelers, like 20, what was that, 20 to 25? I think it's roughly the same value. So maybe it's going to be like that. It is what it is. So we're going to send this through. Um, I actually do think this is a little bit overvalued. So maybe we do only send, um, damn. <laughs> Damn Cowboys or damn Vikings. We really kind of screwed you on this one, but we're going to go actually pick 108 and a future second round pick. Um, the Cowboys are going to send probably back like a future fourth or fifth. We'll, we'll do this a fifth. Do your own negotiating. Okay. I'm not going to limit the Vikings. I don't think the Cowboys are really that desperate for this year draft capital. Anyways, uh, Minnesota does not get fleeced at the end of the day. They still acquired their second and first round picks and they move up. Dallas Turner is still such a damn good option, but you end up getting a lot of picks and still end up getting Bo Nix. And you need a day one starter as well. Even if you bring back Kirk, you, there's no there's no guarantee that Kirk's going to even last. So it's a good opportunity to get a great player. Pick 25 for the Steelers. Bo Nix would have been my choice. Just got to be clear. That's why I moved up. Bo Nix would have been my choice. Uh, I think the Steelers at this point need to draft someone who can make an immediate impact. And I'm trying to get this guy into the first round. It's Jackson Powers Johnson. Uh, this team could use a defensive back for help. And Dwight McLaughlin's there. Holla, love you, PFF, for doing that finally. But Jackson Powers Johnson's probably going to be a center that's taken in the first round. He has had a massive meteoric ascension. He's going to do great at the Senior Bowl. And this is a team where now we acquired some future draft capital, is going to be able to use that on positions like corner, potentially a depth quarterback, because I just don't really feel like Michael Penix with the injury his, his, uh, injury history is going to fit well in Pittsburgh. I mean, Big Ben was never available. Why would we be trying to target someone who has that injury history? But regardless, Jack Spars Johnson, it fills a massive need with a great player. I'm kind of tired of getting the value centers down the board. Pick 26 for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. This is an easy one. Even if they don't keep Baker Mayfield, the best value is Dallas Turner. He's phenomenal. My number four player in the class. And this team is looking for the future at edge. Pick 27 for the Arizona Cardinals. We moved back and selected a great tackle in Olu Fashanyu. Now, looking at the options available, defensive interior with Byron Murphy is sneaky good value. But we can also, at pick 35, get a really good defensive interior. I do think we should be looking at an edge rusher at this point. The corners are not good. The edge rushers are depleting, and I want to get someone who has all the talent in the world is my number five player in the class, Braylon Trice. I know it's going to irritate some of y'all, and I love y'all, but this is also my 10K video, so I also want to show some respect to my board now. He's my number five player in the class. All of these are TBD, of course. We always go through the tape more and more and more. Things do change, but you do need a pure edge rusher. We're going to fix both lines of scrimmage to start out, um, and we are going to get defensive interior tomorrow. I promise you that. Pick number 28 for the Buffalo Bills. Uh, wide receiver is the spot where I always target for this team. I think it's the best thing you can do. There's some really good offensive linemen and wide receivers on the board, so we're not going to be moving out of this spot. You got A.D. Mitchell. You got Troy Franklin. I think the reason why I'm going to go Troy Franklin is because I'm going to try to disarm the Chiefs from the potential best player that they will have, and that's Troy Franklin. Troy Franklin fits the Chiefs to a T, and I don't want to see what Troy Franklin can do paired up with Rashi Rice, I'd prefer for them to take a risk. And I want to get the player who's the best. And uh, Troy Franklin is actually my next best wide receiver that would fit well with the Bills. I do have Keon Coleman as well as Johnny Wilson above him, but Johnny Wilson's just a freak project. So I don't think the Buffalo Bills are in need of that at the moment. Troy Franklin is the selection. Pick 29 for the Kansas City Chiefs. Byron Murphy, sneaky pick here. But I do know wide receiver probably is going to be gone by pick 61 since I also have the Bears picking in the next round. 
So we need to go after a wide receiver here. A.D. Mitchell is a great option too. Troy Franklin was the dream. Well, technically, Troy Franklin is the dream option too. Um, we have, of course, the dream option one in Brian Thomas. And then now A.D. Mitchell. Xavier Leggett, mm, perfect player as well. But to be fair, A.D. Mitchell is 6'4". Xavier Leggett is not 6'3". Look at this. They have him listed at 6'3", senior bowl, six foot and seven eighths inches. So this is 6'1". And 220 pounds, not 230. So... You know, I think he's a little bit less perfect as what we thought. A.D. Mitchell just, he's so good after the catch too. I've been watching plenty of corners against him. This guy is a true technician. I got to give him more respect than where my board has him. So uh, that's exactly what we're going to do. Pick number 30 for the Lions. I love to go edge rusher. I love to send Jonah Ellis there or Chop Robinson because I think that's a very smart move. Probably going to send Chop Robinson. But I do want to shout out defensive interior with Byron Murphy because he's going to get a lot of love, a lot of it. But I have to I have to consider this as a prime opportunity to get Chop Robinson because Chop has so much untapped potential and he needs a mentor like Aiden Hutchinson. He just needs that final mentorship to really make him better. Adiza Isaac's a great mentor for a player that Chop Robinson is not. <laughs> Chop has the IQ that Adisa gets pretty, or well, he gets pretty close to Adisa's IQ. He just needs someone to teach him the finer aspects of the game. So that is going to be exactly what you get there in Chop Robinson. At pick 31, we're back with the Dallas Cowboys. Again, we could actually go after our future center here in Graham Barton. I could go after our future left tackle here in Troy Fautanu, but he doesn't solve a short-term need. I don't think that's what the Cowboys are going to go after. Byron Murphy's dangerous. I know it's hard to think going back to back first rounds with defensive interior, but you know, Byron Murphy is really special. He is. And we're going to get a good center in round two. You know why? Because I already took one of the teams that needs a center. I took the guy who's really valuable already. Like look at the centers. Let's look at them. So we can go Graham Barton. That's going to be a great choice. I always go Graham Barton for this team. Or we could go Zach Frazier or Drake Nugent, or Cedric Van Pran. We have three options I'm relatively comfortable with. But honestly, the only one I'd be comfortable with in round two, like really comfortable with, is Graham Barton. We're going to miss out on that. But defensive interior-wise, this team does need a little bit of a kick in the ass. And Byron Murphy is very similar in my eyes to Jalen Carter. He is. That's why he's 13th on my board. I think he's phenomenal. So, let's give a little bit of love. Let's test this out. I know Cowboys fans are going to get irritated, but let's see how the board falls and let's have fun. Pick 32 with the Baltimore Ravens. Offensive line, wide receiver. Xavier Lewis gets perfect for this team, but I want to see if maybe we can have, you know, a team move up for JJ McCarthy or Michael Penix here. I do see the Patriots. You can get that fifth year option right there and we could still probably get Xavier Leggett or whatever offensive lineman we need. I think that'd be very smart. Uh, JJ McCarthy is a great quarterback. He has all the arm talent in the world, and he needs a little bit more time to develop. Uh, Michael Penix, Michael Penix could be worth it, but JJ needs a year of development, and it's a perfect opportunity to have that training ground and that battleground between Zappy Jones and McCarthy. I think that's a smart move, and I do have JJ usually slip a little bit further than this, but I do think that fifth year contract is really valuable with a developmental player. This is going to cost hardly anything. Cost pick 103. Yes, that does sound a little expensive. But for a team that needs their quarterback, you're getting Marvin Harrison Jr. and a player that has the upside to properly use him. And you have someone who will be there for the long run. So we're going to be drafting J.J. McCarthy with the Patriots. Yes, pick 103 as well as 34 to move up just a couple spots. But that's the fifth year quarterback tax. There you go. That's going to be the video. Thank you so much for showing the love that y'all always do. See you tomorrow for rounds two and three. See you on the far side. Peace.